Hi, it's Jillian and Jordan from Lovely Loops, and we teach people like you how to use the powerful features of the Procreate app so that you don't get overwhelmed. And today, we're talking about flourishing on your iPad. So flourishing is something that can completely transform your lettering from boring to beautiful, and it can also really make your work stand out in the crowd. Not only that, but it's also really relaxing to do and lots of fun. Yeah, so today we're gonna give away some of our secrets so that you can flourish with confidence. And it's actually not as hard as you think. We're gonna walk you through some simple steps so it doesn't have to take you hours. So let's go to our iPad and we'll show you how to create beautiful embellished letters and planned flourish compositions with ease. If you look at this quote here, we can see that there's a really big difference between the version on the left and the version on the right. So it's actually the same exact lettering, but what's different is that on the version on the right, we have all of these embellishments, and these are called flourishes. So if you look at the H, for example, this shape right here on the H um, is called a flourish, and that's different than what you see over here on the left version, which is just a basic loop. So the left version is our base lettering, and the right is our flourished. So the question is, how do we get from what's on the left to what's on the right? And it might seem complicated, but we're going to show you our simple process for adding flourishes to your lettering. So another thing that you can do to make your work really stand out is add a pretty background and add some fun textures and colors. So we are going to be showing you exactly how to create this project um, step by step so that you can recreate it yourself. That will be at the end of this video, but before we get to that, let's just look at some more word examples and talk about the process of flourishing. So let's zoom in on this word, hindsight, and let's talk about some of the placement of the flourishes, because usually that's one of the questions or the biggest struggles when it comes to flourishing, or a big question is, where do I put them? So that's what we're going to talk about first. The first place is on ascenders, like the letter H. So we just saw in the previous quote in the word reach that there was a flourish on the H. And the reason that it's a really great place to flourish is because the H loop is already going above the header line where the letters are resting. So you have this line right here that the letters sit on. That's called the baseline. And then this line up here is called the header line. In between those two lines, that's usually referred to as the X height. So anything that goes outside of the X height, <clears throat> for example, the loop of the H, it comes up above the header line. It's already extending outside where those letters are sitting, so that's a great place to add a flourish because flourishes are just extensions of the letters. So you can see here that the G loop goes below the baseline. Normally, in a basic version, this would just be a pretty simple loop like that. But here we're adding a flourish onto the end of it, so we're extending it downward. On this H, you can see it's actually connecting the H and the T together. That's a really fun way to play around with flourishes is to connect letters together. Um, the T crossbar itself, if this H wasn't here, this would, would also be a great place to add a flourish is on the T crossbar because that that's something that is living outside of the X height of the letters. Normally you would have it right here. And so this is a good opportunity to make this really nice, long, wavy shape to cross the T. So we've talked about ascenders. This is called an ascender, something that goes above the header line. It ascends upward. We have descenders, which go below the baseline. We have T crossbars. Now, if we look at the next word, compassion, you can see that the beginning and the end of this word are also flourished. So this shape right here and this shape right here. So this is the entry or the entrance, and then this would be the end of the word. So if you had a, another word right next to compassion on the right of it, or if it was following a word that was to the left, like for example, if you had a word that was in this space, you probably wouldn't want to add an entrance flourish, but this is a good place to add a flourish if the word is on a line by itself, or if it's just by itself on the page. Um, or if it's at the end of a line, for example, if you're finishing a quote with the word compassion, you can add this flourish on the end here, or if it's on the end of a line, that's a great place. You can also see we have another descender here with this P, just like we had on the G. 
Okay, so then let's look at persist and try to find some of these spots that we've already pointed out. We have this flourish on the entrance of the P, just like we had on the entrance of compassion. We also have another T crossbar right here. Now, if you look at the R, the flourish shape coming down from the R, normally the R would just finish by coming back up this way. So it doesn't usually descend below the baseline right here like we normally would for like a G, for example. But because of the shape of the letter and the direction that it's moving, you can actually add flourishes below the baseline on letters that don't normally go below the baseline. And R is a really great example for that. So the R is moving downward right here. And you can just continue it below the baseline to go into this flourish. Now, the important thing to remember for any flourish is legibility. So this doesn't impact the legibility of the letter. You can still see that it is an R. If we tried to flourish the E, for example, and we made this shape and then came down and made some other flourish, let me do that by itself, like something like this, it kind of becomes difficult to read what this letter actually is. It almost looks like it's just a bunch of loops together. So I wouldn't recommend flourishing letters like E or even the letter I because the letter I is just this shape. So if we didn't bring it back up at the end and we just kept going down and, and added a loop, then it might be hard to read that it's an I. So legibility is very important. Okay, so this is another spot. I'm just going to call this below the baseline. Okay, so we have at the beginning and the end of the word, entrance and exit. We have above and below the word, so that's ascender and descender. We have then the other two are the T crossbar and then this example we saw for the R, which is below the baseline. So just looking at this last one right here, we have a descender for the G, an ascender for the D, because the D normally would go up. We have this T crossbar that is actually crossing through both of these T's. And then we have another end flourish, or you could also call it an exit flourish because it's exiting the word. So hopefully that helps give you some ideas of where to flourish. And now the next question that usually gets asked is, okay, so I know where to make them, but what shape do I make them? And I'm gonna give you a few tips here. So the first tip is that if you look at all the flourish shapes, they're all nice and smooth, and they're actually based on the oval. So if I zoom in here, you won't see a flourish that has a really sharp edge or corner, something like that. All of these lines here are nice and smooth and rounded, and you can fit ovals into these shapes. So you can fit nice, smooth ovals. Usually the ovals will be at a horizontal orientation in this way. And everywhere that you have a flourish, you should be able to fit an oval somewhere. So that's a good guideline to go off of if you're wondering um, how to base your flourishes. You can think in terms of ovals. Let me just point out a few more examples here. Like you can see there's some bigger overarching oval shapes that this curve is following, for example. Or there's also smaller ovals that are kind of hidden within here. And then the next tip is that your lines should cross at about 90 degree angles. So if you look at this intersection point or any intersection point of a flourish where two lines cross, the angle should be about 90 degrees. And this just helps so that your eye can see exactly what path the flourish is trying to follow. If you got an angle that's really a lot less or a lot more than 90 degrees, like a loop that looks something like this, then it's a lot harder to see what the path is supposed to be. It kind of almost looks like just a line with a circle attached to it. So this angle right here is really small compared to 90 degrees, and this one right here is really big. So you want to aim for approximately 90 degree angles anywhere you have intersections. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closer to 90, the better. Okay, so make sure that your flourish shapes follow the oval, and then also that the intersection points cross at about 90 degrees. So now that we've talked about those rules, let's 
take away the flourishes. So these are the same exact words that we just had, but without the flourishes. And you can see everywhere that I normally would have a loop, I just removed the loop. So for example, this G normally would look like that, the H normally would look like this, and the T would look like this. But because those are all great places to flourish, for this example, just having the word skeleton almost here, we're going to remove those loops and remove the T crossbars until the very end, just to remind us that those are some places that we can add a flourish. Okay, so knowing what we know now, let's try to flourish this word hindsight without looking at the example that we saw before. You might be able to kind of remember the shapes, but let's try to do something new. For this first H, another tip is to follow the shape that you would normally have. So normally the loop would look something like this, and you can just continue following that curve. So if I continue following this curvature right here and think about that oval shape, Maybe we can make something like this. And your flourishes don't have to be extremely complex. They can just be simple curves. Sometimes less is more, actually. And then for the G, normally the loop would come this way and then uh, finish here. But if we continued following this curve, maybe you could do something like this. Or you could continue it and then follow through. For this shape, as I'm crossing through this line, I'm making sure that my intersection is at about 90 degrees and I'm keeping my lines nice and smooth. So here for the T, let's try extending the crossbar and instead of making it straight, we'll give it a really nice wavy line like this going through. You might remember on the previous example that we crossed the H and the T together, but you could, if you wanted, you could just leave the H loop like normal. You could try to figure out a way to cross through them together. Um, but like I said, you don't have to flourish every letter that can be flourished just because it can. You could uh, just only do a few and sometimes the effect is even, even more significant when you do less because then you can make those flourishes bigger and more dramatic. And that actually is another tip that I wanted to say is that just like less is more, sometimes bigger is better. So for example, if I go back to this G1, if I made the shape really small like this, maybe zoom out a little, you can see it doesn't have the same effect as if I made the same path, but just increase the size and make it even bigger. That really gives it room to breathe. Same with, let's say we keep this H just a normal loop. Crossing the T with a short wavy line like this, it does add a little bit, but even more would be if you make it really nice and long and wavy. So that is the process that you would follow to flourish a word. First, you would write the base of the word. Then you would find the spots to add flourishes and add them. And then the last step would be to add a new layer. And I'm gonna change my color just so we can see this a little better. Choose a lettering brush. And then the final step to make this seamless, so this is kind of the planning phase, would be to go over this, tracing over your letters, and including the flourishes as you go. So I'm tracing this a little faster than I would normally write it, just so we can get through some more examples here. Okay, so when I get to this G, I'm going to go continuously from the black stroke right here into the blue without lifting at all, like this. Okay, and it's a lot easier to make that stroke when I have a path that's already there for me to follow, which is why the planning phase is pretty important. Okay, and then if you were to hide the other layers, you would be left with your beautifully flourished word. So I'm going to show you a secret weapon that makes this even easier. So hopefully breaking it down like this makes it seem a lot more attainable. But I'm going to show you a secret weapon that we have developed. Okay, so let's Let's go to the word compassion next. Because you might be feeling a little stuck, like yeah, sure, you know where to make the flourishes, but you're still not exactly sure what the shapes should look like. So the secret weapon is our flourish stamp set. So let me show you what that looks like. This is a collection of eight different brush sets, and I'm scrolling through them here. So they're named one through eight. We have entrance, exit, 
Do you notice what these names have in common with what we talked about before? So these are the best places to flourish in your letters. There's also a lettering set that has the lettering brush that I'm using to trace the words. Okay, so these are our secret weapon for flourishing. I'm going to show you how to use one right now. So these are stamp brushes and they are going to be extremely helpful when flourishing. Okay, so let's first look at this word compassion and try to find where we need to add a flourish or where we can add a flourish. And the most obvious place that I see right now is at the bottom of the P. So we do have a lot of room to the left and the right of the P. We have lots of room to the right of it actually under the word. So I'm gonna open my set, go to my descender collection. And then if you scroll here, you can see that there's lots of different options. They start pretty simple. So I'll, I'll just show you what a simple one looks like. I have that one selected and all I'm gonna do is tap on the screen and then move it into place. And that gives me a template to follow, which is pretty cool. Let me undo that and show you a few more. So number four, for example, this one comes out a little bit farther to the right. Because I have this on its own layer, I can resize it if I need. I have uniform selected across the bottom, so it's going to keep it the same proportions. But if I wanted to stretch it a little, I could change to freeform. You can rotate it a little to match your slant line. Like that. I'm going to hide that layer and try a different one. Let's try one that's even more complex. So let's try this one. I'm going to stamp it down here, tap the arrow, and then move it into place. I'm going to make this even bigger. And this is actually similar to the shape that we had on the example page we were looking at before. So the cool thing about using these stamps is that you can actually try different, um, different variations. So if, if you want to try a couple, then you can go back and forth and see which one you like better. And it just gives you lots of different ideas if you're stuck um, and you're not really sure, like, what should this shape look like? Okay, so now let's look at other spots where we can add flourishes. So at the beginning of the C, we could add an entrance flourish. So let me go to my entrance set, and let's try this one, number one. So I'm going to add a new layer. Keeping each stamp on its own layer is really helpful because then you can transform it individually and move it around by itself just by tapping the arrow. So maybe we could have a entrance flourish that looks like that. And then the end of the N, let's look at some exit flourishes. So some of these are pretty simple, like number one and number two are pretty simple. Let's stamp that down and make sure I'm on a new layer. Stamp it down so I can move it by itself. So this is a simple one, but I think it's really elegant and pretty. And it just makes the end of the word kind of finish off. But there are some more complex ones in here. So let me show you number seven. I really like this one. Okay. So you can see if you're wondering like what, what end to connect to the letter, if I zoom in here, you can see that the, there are two ends to this flourish. You'll see right here and right here. So the one that fades, if you notice that this one on the left fades into nothing, let me erase those dots then this is where you would connect it to the letter. Okay, so that's just a helpful little trick so that you know the faded part is gonna connect into the letter base. I'll put it there, and then you can see what this word compassion is gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna make this one a little bigger. You wanna keep the proportions of the flourishes pretty similar to each other. So you wouldn't wanna have one that's like super tiny and then the other one really big. You want to keep the generic oval sizes about the same as each other. Okay, so then you could keep going if you wanted. Um, you could look at these other words and try out different. Let's try out a T crossbar. We could try this one. Move it around to where it fits. There's some really fun below the baseline ones that we could add to this R, so that would be set six. Some of them are really fun here. Oops, I, okay, so I added that on the same layer as the T crossbar, so now they're not moving independently from each other, so it's always easiest if you just add it on a new layer. 
could make that one bigger and then finally let's just add an entrance maybe a simple one here okay and then you would go over this with on a new layer and trace over it seamlessly with your lettering brush so that you have the flourished word by itself okay so i hope that you are excited about these flourish stamps you can get them in the link below this video and then I also really quickly wanted to show you before we go into the project that we actually have a, a workbook that has even more examples. So this workbook has six pages of different words. So let's look at page one. You can see that kind of what we just went through, there's a word example that has flourishes already on it that you can trace for practice if you would like. And then there's another column that has the base word where you can go ahead and add your own flourish stamps. And then if you want to try freehanding it, there's a column for that too. So there's lots of different words in here. There's over 30 words. And um, there's also a quote at the end that you can try doing a quote. So since we're talking about quotes, let's go into the quote project. And we're going to be making the quote that looks like this with the background color and all the stars and everything. So to make this project, first go back to your gallery and create a new canvas. You'll want to tap the plus sign and make a square canvas. I already have one made here. Um, I also have some guidelines in here for my lettering, and these actually come with our flourish stamps, so you can get these guidelines included with the stamp set. I've already also written my base lettering here, so if you are following along and you want to do the rest of the project, now would be a good time to pause and write this quote, reach for the stars. You can just use whatever lettering you would normally use. If you want to turn on some guides, if you don't have guidelines, you can go to actions, canvas, and turn on the drawing guide to give you a little grid to go off of. But I have my guidelines here, and I also have the lettering written. On my lettering, just like we did in the word skeletons before, I've left some places blank so for example, instead of making the loop of the H or crossing the T right here, or even some other spots like finishing the S with an exit stroke or same with the E, I've left those blank. You can either write the word as normal and then erase those spots or just as you go, try to remember not to cross the T because that will remind you that those are some good places to add flourishes. So after you have your base lettering written, we're going to add a new layer every for every flourish because this will just help us to be able to rearrange them if we want and make them independent from each other in case you want to test different ones. So let's just go through starting from the top. And so the H is the first one that I'm looking at. The H is an ascender. So I'm going to go to my ascender set here. You can scroll through and see what all of the options are. There's some really interesting ones here. Number 10 is pretty, and it's kind of complex, so you can try it out and move it around. This one might be going over too far to the left, though, because it's running into that R. If I did try to make it small, then it might end up being too small. Like we talked about earlier, bigger is better for these flourishes. So I'm just going to swipe that off the screen and try a different one. I really like number 5 here. It's simple, but it is so elegant. So all you have to do is stamp it down. And to resize it, if you want, you could use this slider over here. If I turn it down, it will be super small. If I turn it up, it'll be a lot bigger. Or after you place it, you can tap the arrow and move it around like this. You can also rotate it. I think I'm going to rotate mine just a little this way in case your slant is more slanted or more upright. Okay, let's look at the next H right below it. Again, I'm going to add a new layer. Always get in the habit of adding a new layer when you're using these. So I noticed that I have the T right next to the H. So I'm actually first going to look at my T crossbar section. And in here, the first few flourishes are just for the T by itself, but then we have some where they're connected to an H loop. Or this could be a different letter that has an upper loop like L or maybe a B. I don't know if there's a word that has that combination, but TH is probably the most common. So if the loop is on the right, then it's going to be a TH. If the loop is on the left, like seven and eight, you can actually do the HT combination. So I'm gonna do number five because that's a TH combination and stamp it down here, tap the arrow, move it around. 
So if you find that you need to make an adjustment to your original lettering, like let's say it ended up like this and your T crossbar is above where your T is, you could always go back in and make your T taller later. Okay, uh, let's look at the E. So the E is at the end of this line of words. So we're gonna look at an exit stroke for the E. And let's just try something simple. Let's look at number one. So on a new layer, I'm going to stamp down this flourish and the faded end, make sure that that faded end on the left lines up with the letter right here. We can also add an entrance to the F because that's at the beginning of the line. So you wouldn't want to, add, even though this is an exit flourish, it wouldn't really make sense to put it on the R even though the R is the last letter of the word, it's not the last letter of the line, so it might run into the letters next to it. So I'm just gonna keep that on the E. And then for the F, let's look at our entrance section. I'm just gonna use number one, stamp it down. Okay, now for the word stars, we have a few opportunities here. So the T crossbar is the most obvious because we have to cross the T. I'm just gonna choose, let's see what number three looks like. Whoops, okay, so I didn't put that on a new layer that time. I'm going to undo that and then add a new layer. Stamp it down. I think this crossbar is different than what we had on the example quote, but I kind of like this one, so maybe I'll keep this. Then we can add a simple entrance. Let's try number four on the S. as well as an exit on the S. You can see how much easier it is to just stamp these shapes around and move them rather than trying to come up with all these on your own. Okay, and then one more spot that I wanna add one is the R. Remember we talked about how you can add a flourish below the baseline even though it doesn't normally go below. So let's do number four and Stamp it down underneath. So now I'm going to just look for balance and see if there's anything I want to change. At the top left, we have the capital R, but there's no flourish coming off of it anywhere. So there are spots where a stamp might not make sense, but you could still go back in with a brush and figure out how to add your own shape. For example, this part of the R could be extended out this way to the left to give a flourish at the top and to add some balance or maybe you would try to figure out some way to add a curl to the bottom of it you could even try to bring this down a little so there are different ways of doing this there's not just one correct way to flourish you could use completely different stamps than i'm using here and it would end up looking different so i want to make this t a little smaller i think Okay, so now we have our draft done. Then the next step is to add a new layer on top of all of this. In the lettering set, there's a brush pen called Lovely Brush that you can use. I'm gonna change to a different color so it's easier to see. And now making sure I'm on a new layer, I'm just gonna go over all of this together and trace everything seamlessly like we did before with the single words. So I'm tracing over my letters and going directly into the flourishes. So when I get to this H here, I'm gonna start at this point at the top of the flourish and go trace over it and then go right in to that H shape. You can, because you're on an iPad, you can zoom in or zoom out for example, if it's harder for you to trace the shapes when they're really big like this, in which case you'd have to almost move your entire arm to trace it, then if it feels more comfortable, you can make it smaller and trace it at a smaller scale so that you're mostly just using your wrist and your finger movement, whatever feels best for you. I'm always zooming in and zooming out and moving the canvas around so that it's comfortable for my writing position. So for example, right here on this, if I zoom in really close, 
then the flourish ends up being really big compared to my like iPad screen. And so I'll have to kind of move my entire arm to trace over this. And you don't have to follow the template exactly. In fact, it would probably be really hard to make it exactly lined up. It's better to make it smoother rather than trying to trace it exactly. Or if you need to make any modifications too, you can do that while you're going. And this brush is pressure sensitive, so you can see as I'm lettering, some parts are thicker and some are thinner. For the flourishes themselves, you don't really have to worry too much about making spots thicker or thinner. I usually recommend just keeping them all the same so that it's all completely thin. As you get more comfortable with flourishing, you can go back and add some shades as you're going. For example, on this R, if you wanted, you could kind of press down while you're going this way to make this part thicker. Or you could press down while you're going this way to make that part thicker. That just comes with practice. Okay, so we have our final lettering. A trick if you want to turn off every checkbox except the layer that you are on is to tap and hold on the checkbox. So I'm going to tap the checkbox next to the layer and hold it and it will turn off everything else. So what I like to do when I'm making a project like this is make a duplicate of my final lettering layer just so that I don't have to worry about if I make a change and then I want to go back. So I made a duplicate by swiping left and duplicating. Turn off the checkbox and now I'll use this layer for my lettering. But before I do anything else with this, I want to make my background. So on a new layer, I already have a color palette created here. I called it Blue Galaxy, but I just have some blue tones. You don't have to use the exact same colors, but just a range of from kind of lighter to darker. And I'm actually going to choose the darkest one right now and fill this layer to use as the background. Then on top of that, I'm going to add a new layer and go to my soft brush under airbrushing with 100% opacity and about eight, seven or eight percent size. Then I'm just going to take these colors in my palette. Again, you don't have to use the same ones and draw across changing colors as I go with a little bit of overlap in between. We're going to end up blurring this together. And I want these colors to go up about halfway up the screen until I get to the darkest colors, maybe a little more than half. So next I'm going to blur these together by going to adjustments, Gaussian blur, which is the second one, and then slide from left to right on my iPad until I get these blurring together. Now I don't want to blur it all the way like this because I want to keep some of the color variation. I kind of like it somewhere around here. I just want to get rid of the harsh edges, which to me looks like it's around 32%. Maybe a little higher, 33. And then tap the wand to get out of that. So this is going to be the background. On top of the background, add a new layer. And I'm going to go back to choosing the darker color. And now I'm going to choose a monoline brush, which you can find one either under calligraphy or in the lettering set of the flourish stamps. Then I'm just going to draw kind of like a wavy, squiggly line across the bottom, making sure it's closed on either end. And then fill this by taking the color dot in the top right, dragging it and releasing it. So this is going to look like some mountains. I'm going to turn this on alpha lock by tapping on the layer and choosing alpha lock. Go back to an airbrush and choose a this like medium darker purplish blue color and just really lightly around the edges of the mountains give it just a little glow to kind of look like it's reflecting from the sky a little. And then because it's on alpha lock it's only allowing me to draw on the what I've already colored on. Okay, so I'm going to blur that a little bit too, just so it's not so harsh. Yeah, just a tiny bit more right here. Okay. So then next, 
I'm going to add some stars and I want this to go behind the mountains so that the stars don't show up on the mountains. So below the mountain layer, I'll add a new layer. I'm going to change my color to white. So in the classic color menu, I like to just change it to that and go up to the top left corner. And then under luminance, there's a brush called glimmer. So I made a, a customization to this brush, which I'll talk about in a second. This is what the default glimmer brush looks like, but I wanted the stars to be a little farther apart and not so close together. So I just customized this brush by first duplicating it. You can duplicate a brush by swiping it to the right and choosing duplicate. And then in the brush studio, which if you tap on the brush, it opens the brush studio. I increase the spacing and the jitter to maximum under stroke path. So then I'm going to use this brush around 24% and just kind of lightly draw some stars. I'm almost just like stamping down. I don't want them to be too bright or too many of them because this brush is uh, pressure sensitive. So if you press harder, they'll get a little bit bigger. So in some areas, it would be nice to have some bigger ones, but then overall, I want them to be pretty small and kind of random looking. I don't want them to look like I drew a horizontal line with stars. Okay, so I'm just stamping around, getting some in here, pressing a little bit harder towards the top in the darker areas, but then still filling in some smaller ones at the bottom. And then the next step that I'm going to do is add a nebula. I'm going to do this on a separate layer from the stars in case I want to move it. So I'm going to use the default nebula brush. And this brush actually changes color a little bit. So if you, if you keep white, it's only going to be white. But if you change the color to like a really light blue or purple, then you'll be able to see that it has some color variation built in. And the more you go over the same area, the whiter it looks. So I don't want it to look pure white like this because that doesn't look very realistic. So first I'm actually gonna turn the opacity down a little bit and then um, not press extremely hard when I'm drawing because if you press hard, it'll be lighter. If you press lighter, then it will be more transparent, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna make this even a little more color, maybe slightly closer to blue and then just lightly draw in some nebula and the shape that I'm going for is a little bit bigger at the top and then it gets kind of smaller towards the bottom. I'm just very lightly pressing down to add this in and as I go over some areas it will start to get more white. So after I have kind of a base shape in here maybe I'll turn the opacity up a tiny bit, go over a little more. There's a slight amount of color variation in here, just so it's not pure white. All right, and then one more thing with this, I'm gonna change the blend mode. So right now it's normal. You can see it's normal with the N right here next to the layer name. And if you change it to add, then it brightens it up just a little bit. If you go back between normal and add, you can see a difference. Just makes it a little brighter and lighter. One more step on the star layer, if you want to add some bigger stars, under luminance there's a brush called Flare, and this allows you to add single stars. You can change the size and make them bigger or smaller, and it's just a fun way to add some different stars because these look more like they're shining, and the other stars are a little more circular. All right, so here is our background. Now let's bring our lettering back in. So the lettering layer that we had before is currently under the background for me, which is why I can't see it. So I'm going to tap and drag the layer up above everything else, and now you can see it on top. So I'm going to alpha lock this layer by choosing alpha lock, and then I'm going to fill it with white so that it is on top, and you can see it in white. Then I'm gonna reposition it just to the right so that it's not covering the nebula. And as a final finishing touch, I'm going to add some glitter to this. So I'll add a new layer on top of the lettering. I'm gonna choose this darker gray color here. Okay, and then I'm gonna to go to the shimmer set. 
So this, you can find a link to this set. This has awesome glitter brushes in it. I'm just going to show you a few. If you color with it, it looks like glitter, which is amazing. There's a few different ones in here. And I just love these shimmery brushes. I'm going to choose the one that's just called glitter. And over everywhere that we have lettering, I'm just going to color over it. With this brush, if you lift your pencil and then go over the same area again, it gets really bright. So you can go over the same area more than once if you want it to be lighter. And make sure that my lettering is completely covered. Then I'm going to, on this layer, tap and choose Clipping Mask. And this will clip it to the lettering below it. And now you can see that the lettering is full of glitter. Okay, one more tiny thing that I want to adjust is back to this colorful layer on the background. You can adjust where the colors are, so I think I want to see a little more of a brighter blue. So if you just tap it and then move it around, you can change how much is showing. So I'm going to choose Freeform and just drag this up a little so more of the blue is showing, the lighter blue at the bottom. Also just a really cool tip. If you want to change the colors of what this looks like, with that layer selected, the layer that has the colors on it, you can go to Adjustments, Hue Saturation and Brightness towards the bottom, and then with the Hue Slider, you can move it around, and whoa, that looks cool. So you can change the colors of it and see what it looks like if you made it more purple or more green. So that is just another little bonus tip. Okay, so here now we have a beautiful quote. The flourishing makes the lettering just stand out. And then the background is actually pretty easy to create, but just makes it look even more magical. I just wanted to show you one more thing um, that is going to be really helpful for using the flourish stamps that we've been showing you. So we actually put together a user guide that has tons and tons of information here about how to use the stamps, how to pick the stamps, how to fit them to your lettering, some tips about resizing, and other tips about how to use them. We also have a really handy reference chart that shows you, for all the letters, what are the best flourishes to use. So for example, the letter B, you could use an entrance flourish, if it's at the beginning of the word, or an ascender. Like we talked about with the ascenders, those are loops that go above the baseline. So for every letter, we give you some tips about how to use them. So again, this is part of our Flourish reference guide for using the Flourish stamps. And if you think that they would be helpful, we would love for you to try them out and let us know what you think of them. Thanks so much for joining our lesson. We hope you learned a lot about flourishing and how you can use it on your calligraphy on your iPad to make your work even more beautiful. All the products that we mentioned today are available below this video, so we hope you go check them out. And finally, if you followed along with this project, we would love to see how it turned out. You can tag us on Instagram or join our Facebook group so that we can see what you created.